So guys, what did I say? It is Energy Pacemaker, the surprise team of this tournament. Tong Fu was the... I don't know, everybody said Tong Fu is gonna take this tournament, they looked so good in a round robin. Uh, Energy Pacemaker had a horrible second day, they, they almost even lost their spot here in the top four, in the tiebreakers, but then they, yeah, they just crushed Newbie, went into a best of three with Newbie, got there crushed, and then suddenly came back, and I think on this, like, positive karma, on this positive wave, they keep on rolling because now they just beat the favorite of this tournament, Tong Fu. Still, it's a best of three. Tong Fu needs two games now to seal the deal here, pretty much. But Energy Pacemaker, they're looking good. My name is Heflamok. You're here watching Hefla TV. And with me is Mr. Blackadder, our British force in Hefla TV, pretty much. He just woke up and supports me here with everything he can do. So let's hop into this draft and let's see where the Chinese go with their draft this time. Well, to start out with, Energy Pacemaker helped themselves to a Le Shrak once again. And we've seen how strong this was in game number one. I'm honestly surprised that Tong Fu have let them have this a second time. Well, I mean, there, there, there is not much option around it. That's that's the problem. If you ban out the Le Shrak, then you get the Storm Spirit, for example, by EP. Or you might as well just get uh, the Queen of Pain against you. I mean, okay, the Le Shrak was really an uh, amazing force last game. I have to admit that um, it was more or less also the synergy than that old chicken caught up so much and the lash rack on the sidelines more or less like uh, under the radar got that much farm and everything out of it and his split push and his aggressive playstyle with the BUTs and then getting the kill on the gyrocopter that pretty much really broke Tong Fu's neck there. They're gonna go for the gyrocopter this time which means uh, the Shadow Fiend would be another option for Tong Fu, unless of course Energy Pacemaker says, no, this time we go with these cores and we ban out uh, the Shadow Demon, uh, Shadow Fiend, for example. Too many shadows today, I'm confused. <laughs> well, in this case, we've got Leshrac and Gyro up against the Queen of Pain. So this is something we mentioned in the first draft. We didn't see the Queen of Pain picked up at all and it wasn't banned either, versus a very low health, squishier lineup. Now, Gyro, before he gets, say, a BKB or anything else to increase his strength, has that problem, and so does that Leshrac, especially before the Bloodstone. Queen of Pain can certainly burst down these targets, and then you've got to throw on top of this, you've got Clockwork to throw a cog in the mix and really mess up the positioning within a team fight. So, hmm. Yep. Based Definitely. on the first two picks, this, this seems to be much more in Tong Fu's favor draft-wise, but bans? Well, second phase, we've got Lina, AA... Spirit Breaker and Dazzle Band out, and a Rubik for Tong Fu. Now, yep. Rubik, stealing a cooldown, probably the best spell he can get other than Split Earth right now, but we get the Shadow Demon once again for EP, which, well, Leshrac, set up, sounds about right. So what's actually missing now is an Earthshaker in this mix. Um, that's also like one of the highest buns and picks here in this tournament so far. Everything else, like the, the Undying Tusk, Spirit Breaker, they're all banned out as well as the Storm Spirit. So Shadow Fiend and Earthshaker, these are pretty much the two that are uh, top of the list of the heroes picked. Everything else is either picked or banned already. So I'm looking forward that we get an Earthshaker. And, well, the Shadow Fiend would, in theory, I guess, fit Tong Fu unless they just don't want to have this. I mean, Clockwork, Shadow Fiend, there is synergy there. Uh, Queen of Pain later into the game, also transitioning into uh, more or less right clicks, but yeah, they go for Juggernaut as their physical core, ignoring completely the Shadow Fiend, which is very interesting, to be honest. I guess they just don't want to have the same situation Old Chicken was in the last game, where he had to face a super aggressive Viper with an undying decay spamming you, so he had to go in the jungle, because if you have that same situation, well, you're not sure if you can really come back just as Old Chicken did it. The Juggernaut, however, was once already picked today, which was a complete disaster. Actually, Energy Pacemaker, I think, picked him in their first game against Newbie. And, well, uh, it was, I don't know, like, you barely had the feeling that this, this hero is even in the game. It felt like a 5-4 and four game all the time, like, nothing really worked out in in that game for the Juggernaut. So let's see if Tung Fu can, can somehow build this Juggernaut stronger with more presence than Energy Pacemaker played it earlier. The thing with the Juggernaut, you can play him in a few ways. You can get the many points in the Healing Ward early and look to push Towers, which, sure, you've got a Queen of Pain who can be aggressive and a Clockwork, but Rubik's more of a defensive support. You don't have a jungler like a Chen or an Enchantress which can certainly force towers combined with a juggernaut. 
or you can go with the high crit points and just look to abuse the Omni Slash. But then again, you're against a Pugna who's going to decrep. You're against a Shadow Demon who can dispersion uh, disruption the target that gets Omnied. I'm not too sure about this Juggernaut, in all honesty. It it doesn't feel like it's going to really do much in this game. He fell off in terms of popularity for pretty good reason. And then you've got to throw in the Leshrac. Sure, Juggernaut versus Leshrac. Juggernaut can avoid most of Leshrac's damage, but... Yeah, and Energy Pacemaker, they, they go for a push game here. This really looks like a push game. You have the yeah. Gyrocopter back up, clearing out waves like nothing, uh, especially on top of the Leshrac. The Puck now throwing in the Nether Plast and Leshrac with a Diabolic Edict. This is a, a very, very deadly combination. At the moment, if I look at it, um, we do not have much of a counter push. I mean, Queen of Pain takes a while till there's a Ghanem Scepter where she can spam a Sonic Wave. Other than that, we have, what, a Fate Bolt, uh, maybe some Rocket Flares. Um, stopping that is, is quite hard, especially if Energy Pacemaker, they have some support items. So if we get uh, Arcane Boots up, if we get uh, a Mech up on one of those targets, Pugna might actually be the Mech carrier in a fourth position getting it together. Not sure how fast, but... That's like the question. If they get some fast tier 1 towers where he might even get the last hit, then this is definitely possible to punch through. Let's see. Uh, energy Pacemaker, to be honest. <laughs> um, as stupid as that might sound right now, but they're not a pusher team. They're not a team that has like the, the early game pushing advantage. Like other teams, they, they, they at least me as an observer, I have a better feeling with those teams. Energy Pacemaker is really that team that has a nice big picture of a game when can they come back they proved it twice already that like any the enemy enters your base gets your racks and the next thing you do is win the game that's what an energy pacemaker can, can really do very well about the early push well they have to prove me wrong on this one now energy pacemaker with one what we've seen tend to do better in the late game and they well been playing from behind in the two that i've seen this morning but they can certainly take games late early it'll be interesting to see what they can do but they've got they've got the Edict, they've got Nether Blast, Gyrocopter can push towers pretty well, and that's what I was looking for, a Keeper of the Light to really keep the NG Pacemaker team out. It's also going to feed Rubik a good chunk of mana, more so than the Jugger, because the Jugger doesn't really oh, need to and there it comes, too much. the counter push. Look yeah. at this. This is what they needed, and it... Honestly, I, su I suddenly feel a lot more confident about Tong Fu's draft. They're going to need to take this late, though, and... This goes back quite a way, if, uh, I think a patch, maybe two patches, but I remember some specific words by Bruno. After 30 minutes, Juggernaut falls off massively in terms of his win rate. I think it was something like 30% of a win rate dip. I'm sure our stats man will be able to tell me if that is still correct. But yep. early game, Jug... Yeah, late game, not so much. Well, I think the, the Keeper of the Light is not just the counter push they were looking for. I mean, I already said it uh, before, like they do not have much means to actually stop um, the push that's coming here out of by EP if they really play it correctly and, and uh, after a relatively decent laning that's not completely lost on all lanes. Um, the Illuminate <laughs> is one thing. The, the Chakra Magic is the second thing because Juggernaut is generally a mana-starving hero. If that hero is mana fat, he can actually do it's it's of course not as effective as a PL, for example, that suddenly spams you like with a lens every ten seconds or something like that. But um a juggernaut that is not mana starving, that is also something worth it. Indeed. But we shall see as we get the last pick being the bristleback for energy pacemaker. Now I very much like this pickup. Sure, you want to try to play defensive with the Tongfu draft. Bristleback's gonna get in your face, and honestly. If you've got a bristle in your face as well as your towers falling, it's going to be difficult for Tong Fu to really do much, in my opinion. But we shall certainly see how well Tong Fu managed to hold this game, if this is indeed a push strategy. But for all intended purpose, let's introduce the players, shall we? Yep, so we have Xiao Li on the last pick here, the presser back. We have LT playing the Lash Rag, Lei on the Shadow Demon. Old Chicken is actually a mid-carry core Freaking Pagna, which I did not see coming. Fan on the Jarakov, the hero that he plays pretty well, actually. So, yeah, interesting. On the flip side of that coin for Tongfu, who are actually contesting the same rune, so we might have a little bit of first blood here if we're, if we're lucky. We'll get UUU9 on the Queen of Pain. We've got LPC on the Keeper of the Light. ZingQ handling the Juggernaut. Over on the Rubik, we've got Kabu. And in the offlane role, of course, on the Clockwork, we've got Zex Bingo. And now, well, let's see if we get a bit of a scuffle here. 
Uh, well, I think, yeah, we actually might see one here. The Juggernaut is the closest one at the moment to the drone, but there's another one up as well. He's gonna get that bounty rune, but the question is now, do we actually see something? The quill space already coming out, doing quite some damage, but look at all the damage by the Juggernaut. He's spinning, but the problem is, well, level one spin is not really what you want. Is there anything else coming out? Nice illuminate here, but the right click should be enough for a first blood. However, they lost so much HP now. I think there might even be a follow-up here. The Shadow Demon is sticking around. I don't even know why, but they're gonna use the self, and now that's bad news. Well, there is a Plink, so Queen of Pain getting safely out. The Rubik, however, is he going for something? Some action here on the on the puck now? I don't think so. In the end, it's a 1-1 one -one trade. I still have the feeling that, yeah, with the Juggernaut TPing to the Tier 1 tower now, the Lashrak might actually be in a very, very bad position. Cuddle of the Light, he has more movement speed. Way, way more movement speed. This is 320, 315, actually. Oh, he gets the kill. Yeah, neutrals couldn't manage to finish the job. But still a two for one trade. It's about even considering first blood. Still, though, I have to come back to our usual thing here on Heffler when I'm casting with you. Who are you putting your money on? Who are you betting on in this game based on the draft? Uh, well, on a contingency, I say EP if they push decently till 20, 25 minutes. If they do not get their push up, then Tong Fu will, will just erase them from this map pretty fast late game. I, I'm not going to put any ifs or buts on mine. I'm going to say Energy Pacemaker will take this game pretty handedly. I should think around maybe the 30 minute mark they'll have the GG. By the way, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty surprised about the movement speed. I, I did a big mistake. I thought the Coddle has more movement speed than the Lashrak on base uh, movement speed. But it's not the fact. The Lashrak is damn fast actually. Like a 320 movement speed without boots. Okay. I, I did really. Like till now I thought the Lashrak is, is slower than a Coddle on level one. Never mind that! The difference is only five, so yeah. it, either way you're not going to escape if you're point blank. But now, well, Rubik forcing the defense of Telekinesis not to die to the Bristle and the, uh, the Leshrac, but certainly in this case, the way these lanes have shaped up, I'm wondering how much the Bristle's actually going to get in this offlane role, considering we've seen Leshrac relegated to the support in this game, not core. So the prison back. I'm not so sure how he's how much he's gonna get in this lane because it's a very effective lane. The the illuminate is is always a lot of damage, and it looks like we we don't see that other Chinese coddle coming out that has like mana leak level one. He's going really for the chakra magic plus the illuminate, which is of course something you can set up into a telekinesis holding him in place. And then uh, we already have the level one juggernaut. At the moment, he's holding back on his skills. Like he doesn't decide what is he going for. So yeah, if, if he's going for more points into it, which we saw already, even though that's, I think the not so dominant build at the current meta, then they might actually get an easy kill on the person back. Also talking about easy, uh, EP has one advantage, and that is simply the fact that they have a lineup, a draft that can go for the Ancients easily with the person back, and that's why he's already stacking that. He can stack that Will Krill spray from this side. He pulls them over at the right timing, which is 52, and yeah, that way they have an additional income. Oh, two point stats on the Juggernaut, so we're going to be looking, I think, for a good amount of right click going into the Omni Slash. He wants the extra stats just so he can Omni as well as spin. Or healing ward in this case. Yep. Oh, I, I didn't even see it. I, I thought he's actually keeping the no, points. It, yeah, he went not. for stats. It, it's an older build with Juggernaut. You'd see two point stats, usually with many, many more points in Blade Fury, but that's not really needed or done these days very much. Where you see multiple points in Blade Fury. Yeah. No. I mean, that's 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 fine as well. At the moment, he went for that one point in the healing ward, like the the value point, and that's it. Well, the keep off the light. I think he was on a warding mission. He wanted to go in there and just ward, but all oh, illuminate directly in the escape path and easy going, easy kill. Um, the keep off the light. Not uh, actually. Yeah. He put. That was the early ward, and he's is he going back up there for that ward? He still has it in the inventory, but I think it's also better to just put a put a sentry in there. I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure they want to block that camp soon, otherwise they yeah, they have to deal with their prison back sooner or later taking that stack. Mm -hmm. Well, if they don't if they don't block it, they're going to have big problems when that uh, Bristleback gets a sudden burst of gold. And in this game, I should think we might see the uh, mechanism Bristleback build if he gets the gold for it, considering the Pugna. Sure, we could see a mech on a Pugna, but I well, think there's a smoke gank actually. 
Look at this, okay. and the Shadow Demon yeah. might actually be the one who suffers there. There should be a Telekinesis into Illuminate. Nope, there is the disruption already. He, he's going in that direction, and Telekinesis into the Illuminate. Well, the Clockwork, if he gets the Rocket, yeah, that's that's easy. I, I was about to say, if he gets the Cogs, then it should be easy kill, but he just went so fast down. Easy problem. No, easy kill, no problem for him that way around. And they might actually rotate here in the mid. At least there is a new ward coming up. Um, like we have two wards now, one look in here, and there's the Sentry Ward. Rubik actually getting quite some damage uh, on the way, but still, it's sooner or later they're gonna clear this. Well, as it stands in this game, 4 1 the way of Tongfu. Tongfu looking to again really control that early game, which is something they seem to do a lot better than NG Pacemaker, but can they really? Convert this into a mid-game lead is my wonder, as now you've got Tong Fu, well, Yu Yu 9 trying to go very aggressive on that mid lane, but Old Chicken just responds with that life drain and all of that aggression from the Queen of Pain for naught. Yeah, that was completely owned, like, the Queen of Pain thought, okay, I bait him into killing that ward, and then really gonna do a lot of damage, but he's level 6, and the life drain is just so powerful on the Queen of Pain, and even now, he could just do exactly the same, he doesn't really go for it, um, what are they waiting for, no, there's the life drain, he tried to kill that nether ward, now they do it, well, it's an additional CS, but nothing else is gonna happen on this one, this last track, uh, in the 4th position, also too late there to actually put the lightning in, but still, it's at, at least it's going for the course decently because the the juggernaut is farming so far, and also the uh, the gyrocopter is is doing decently, because yeah, the clockwork so far has not been able to actually push him out. Usually we see on a one one situation the clockwork harassing with cogs, mana burning, and everything. But here yeah, it's it's just not happening at the moment. The gyrocopter is totally free. But then again, no one is pulling for him which means the lane is actually pushing out, so the Clockwork gets some experience. Hmm. Well, the Clockwork getting experience is what they need in all honesty. They need this hookshot online as early as possible, since that's going to be the one deciding a lot of these engagements in my mind, getting a hookshot into cogs and just trapping and isolating at least one person. Oh, that Hell. dive top. Yeah, Jesus that's... Christ, so many going for that tier 1 tire, but they're not gonna find that clockwork, he already ate his way through, now he's juking around, he could actually trap someone here, and with some rotations they might even be able to kill something, old chicken rotating in, there's another blast, this tier 1 tower, well there's the cliff slowing it all down, actually the Rubik is also coming in, and now it gets an interesting fight here, Fateful, everything is coming down, the Sonic Wave clearing one, and look at this, Queen of Pain just clearing here, but, well, Pugna is gonna do the rest, it's a free for one, Shui, and the tower, I'm not even sure, did the tower get denied? No, Pakna actually got it. But still, it's a it's a 4 for 1 trade with a tower just on top of it. That's not really what you want to do. No, it isn't. That kind of deficit there for Energy Pacemaker. Losing three heroes on the top lane and the Bristleback on the bottom lane to the Juggernaut. That, that just does not happen when you're going with a good push strategy. You can't afford to just split your forces like that. If they had put that respect on the top lane, maybe they'd have forced out that Quop a bit more and stopped her being as aggressive as she was. But the scream from that Quop followed by the... Uh, the Sonic Wave, sorry, followed by the scream. Uh, that was just beautiful on that top lane. Absolutely. I mean, Tong Fu is, is totally happy with that. Giving a tier 1 tower away for, for this kind of trade, that's okay -ish. And, well, let's see. This Queen of Pain, oh, very aggressive. There's another plus definitely flying on him. He has no... He has no playing, so you really gotta be careful. The telekinesis is definitely helping him there, getting additional damage. The the prisoner back. Did he actually clear his camp? No, he's still on that on the ancient mission here. While the juggernaut, well, he kind of entered the jungle. He has now the morbid mask. Is he transitioning into uh, flats and then yeah, just going wherever he he can farm? He he still needs a lot of farm, of course that is, but but still. I'd very much like to see a Vlad's on the Juggernaut. I think that might be one of the better pickups considering their team. Sure, the armor is going to be nice for everyone, but the lifesteal on the Jug as well as on some of the Queen's damage as well, since range heroes can now do ever so nicely benefit from that uh, lifesteal. It just makes Vlad's an all around good item. Yep. Even for a four range hero team or three range hero team, it's it just such a nice change in this patch. I'm still curious when, when they're gonna rotate into these Ancients. I'm pretty sure it's it's gonna happen in like like two, three minutes when the Gyrocopter maybe leaves his lane. At the moment he has three points into the Flak Cannon. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be part of it. Um, well, it could be either the Prisoner or the Gyrocopter or both at the same time. That's something 
Well, we have to see what's actually happening. The gyrocopter, well, he goes into Helm of Dominator at this point. The helm is already there, giving him some HPS and some armor, which he also could need for the fight still. Uh, right now, at least, there's also a lot of magic load coming up. Oh, Pogna, that might be a bad position there. Oh, he gets the rune, but he's getting blown up by the Queen of Pain. That's the good part of the Queen of Pain against the HP pool of a Pogna. You can really blow him up in seconds. Yeah, that, that was... That was half a second. He, he just exploded. There was nothing he could do. And we do have a, I don't believe I'm saying this, Mask of Madness for the Juggernaut. Now, I know this is a lot more normal than, say, Dagon Brood, but against what is quite a magic-heavy team, this is an interesting choice from Zinku. He may, of course, pop that Mask of Madness during the Omni and just look to burst people down within the Omni Slash, but... Mask of Madness, the damage increase that you take, it, it's not negligible by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, top, there's a nice go here. Singled out Clockwork, nothing he can do. Nice disruption, call down, and the Rocket Barrage. Level 4, directly into his face. Everything, just focus on him. Full damage value. That's a nice, easy intermediate kill. Just a nice little intermezzo. Um, in the mid, Queen of Pain, well, could actually put some pressure on this tier 1 tower for a tiny bit, but there is already a rotation in. It's not like they can kill the Queen of Pain as long as she has uh, the blink, unless she's messing around with that Pakna, but yeah, he's, she's just going for his ultimate and that's it. Also bottom, some push is actually happening, coming out by Tung Fu. And they have to be careful, because like once that tier 1 tower is, is falling here, um, they can also give Tung Fu access around the Ancients, and uh, we already saw today a game where a big fat Ancient stack was stolen which is always a bad thing, so I think at some point Gyrocopter and Prusa back, they should get on it, otherwise this is a too big stack to lose. Mm. Well, the stack, if if they lose it, is going to be very detrimental, and it is pinged out, but Bristle, he can't really take the stack yet, not without quite a bit of help. This is, this is yeah, one he of the needs help at this point, yeah, yeah. He does at least to solve, like to go uphill, solve really fast up, and then keep the kill stack somehow, or someone tanking in between while he's solving, um, just standing there and like taking the hits at the moment, waiting for the automatic procs. Now it's it's not gonna happen. Not on on the level two, uh, press back. Hmm. If the Leshrac rotates in, he doesn't have really enough points in double he did to really make any impact on those ancients. Actually, he he needs some support at least to rotate him for help on those ancients. They need that gold. They need it at least sooner rather than later. They're nine to three in terms of kills. They've got a six kill deficit and they've only taken one tower at 12 minutes with what most people would consider a pseudo push strat. Then again, the gyrocopter can, of course, farm into late game, so can the bristleback. And a Pugna, a Pugna late game doesn't do nothing. It, the nether ward is, of course, always going to be very relevant, but let's say you build into an Agonims on Old Chicken, yeah. or and they more ping importantly, it out a now. Scythe of Vice. Yeah. Well, they ping it out that they want to go for the Ancients. It's actually the Prusa back alone who goes into it. The problem is they just put Observer Ward into an existing Sentry, so that's of course bad news. And yes, I think they're gonna approach this. Like, there's a hookshot, they're gonna scout it out with a rocket. They see the Ancients actually being uh, pulled out, but now nothing's actually following up. They already went back. Like, EP is well aware that Tong Fu knows about the stack. They know that, like, this is a good timing for EP to actually go for it, so they have to stop it, which is the right thing to do. Um, mm. As in the Kusha items, is there anything coming out? I mean, we already talked a bit about the Mask of Madness. That's coming out for for the Juggernaut. Um, as a first item against this call, well, sure, uh, a bit of a question mark, but it's the dominant build even now. And oh, Gyrocopter against Juggernaut. There is the Mask of Madness actually being popped, the call down. Uh, and now the question is, do we see enough? Yes, there is absolutely enough. So he's going down. Lucky bounces or not enough creeps. Not enough creep support for the Gyrocopter. Hmm. Well, that's the thing, Omni Slash, yeah, I caught alone anyone. Oh, in mid, there. nice little hookshot here on the Lashrack as a single target, he gets the full battery assault in his face as well. Even the Pakna can't really do anything, the damage on him is very, very limited. With that, uh, with the Juggernaut, by the way, looking at his items right now, do you think we're going to be seeing the Manta next on him? Maybe he just, just keeps the, the casual Yasha and then goes into something else, we have to see. Um, for the gyro, I'm, I'm not even sure. Is it really worth to to go for uh, for a BKB, for example? What is it? Kind of depends what the Queen of Pain is going for. With the two Nulls talents, we already saw that of few nine. 
uh, coming out before that Orca Club, it could still be a BKB, it could still be a gun of Scepter, but then usually you would go for a point booster first. We have a recall, actually. The Keep of Light brings the Juggernaut into the mid. Is this like some call for push? Or what is this fun? I think they're going to set up to push down this tier one. I mean, take a look. You've got Keeper of the Light who's maintaining control of this area. You've got Rubik pushing the lane with the clockwork. This is this is going to be a tier one, and Juggernaut's just going to farm the ancient stack. And then it's a double stack, so he's going to get a nice bit of gold there. Still, UU9, he's ready to jump in and ult anyone who comes to defend this one. Deny attempt? No, doesn't quite manage it. Queen of Pain picks up the kill on the tower. Oh, there's another ward down, so they don't really want to scuffle too much, but still. The tower and more farm on the Juggernaut through Ancient Stacking. Yeah, well, top they, they pushed a bit, at least towards the tier 2 tower. The creeps just barely reaching the tower, and the Juggernaut even interrupts the Ancient Farming just uh, to defend this out. So Tong Fu, they really, they really know that like if EP starts to push or wins a fight and then push, that like the push power behind EP is so strong that they really have to defend every single point on, on Siege. They can, but yeah, it's, it's not really happening. At the moment, the Prisabak is now going for the Ancients again. Uh, and this time, it seems like they're uncontested. The Clockwork would be in a position for a hookshot, but at the moment, he's alone. There is, well, the Keep of the Light joining him, but no one else is really moving towards it. So I think those Ancients, yes, they're, they're going down. At least the majority of them is going down. Well, Illuminate saying hello. Netherworld already being set up, and it's the rest converging. I don't think they, they move. It's really just them showing off. Well, Keep of the Light gonna do some illuminate but not even gonna make anyone well they're sieging with the rocket flare and with the illuminate they're just trying to deter the bristleback from taking a stack but bristleback wants this damn stack yeah well they, they really want to well it's it's what it's i've been talking about, about so so yeah. much uh it, it really yeah. is about damn time that they finish up that stack and now we've got illusions of juggernaut rotating around and going to certainly at least threaten that illusion is actually quite resilient. Jesus, guys, good him for 300. <laughs> Getting the the bristle actually quite low because he took it in the face instead of in the back. So, 11 and 3. How how is the advantage of Tong Fu? Man, that's that's actually a lot for 17 minutes. 7.5k. No sign of like. I know a call for for crazy pushes on EP the sustain items. Are they actually there? We have only one arcane. We have no mech. Uh, just. Uh, Five stakes, pretty much, and the urn. That's that's all we got, as in like somehow sustaining a push. Eight. That's I don't know. We have the shadow demon being founded by the queen of pain. There is a sonic wave, but uh, it's not fast enough on a disruption. Instead, all well, they find the stone and the lightning on the queen of pain, but it's just way too late. She went, by the way, directly into a BKB. So no Arcanum scepter. She really wants to go and be prepared against Pakna because Pakna is really the one besides the Gyrocopter who does the most damage on her. Most importantly in that fight, actually, Kabu stole Split Earth. On oh, a really big Split Earth, instant cast, that's going to be very impactful in the next team fight, in my opinion. But the You're talking about Aghanim's options for, say, the Queen. She got a BKB now, maybe go for the Aghanim's next, but Aghanim's wise, we're seeing it rushed on the Keeper of the Light. When LPC gets this Aghanim's up, I think we're going to be looking to push with a lot more certainty from Tong Fu. Yep, definitely. When you said it, like, right now, Tong Fu, that's, that's the funny part. I mean, I just supported it by the craft. They already have advantage. The advantage is growing and not not slowly. Like, this is something that goes really, really fast and inspires out of control. Right now, I don't even think they need to press a fight. They don't need to push. They still do it because, well, you got a level 2 Omni Slash here. You, you know, you might as well just do it. Now, the Pacific at the moment supported by quite a lot of creeps, but they don't even need that. He's just... Mask of Madness hitting him down. This is just two points in play dance, but pff, well, who needs who needs any Omni Slash there? Well, this is the one nice thing about the mask that I will grant you. If you have a good pick off uh, team where you've got, say, a Rubik rotating with that telekinesis in this case, and you isolate one person, that mask is brilliant. In big 5v5 engagements, though, mask can be more of a detriment than a blessing. Yeah, but in this case, I think uh, in this we case, reach a point where the Juggernaut is so farmed because the next step is going to be a, a BKB that he's he's not going to care. He's really not going to care. He's just going in. If he's going low, uh, he will just go for the Omni Slash and then, then try to somehow get out of this. And that should be just fine. Now, he's pushing for the tower. He's doing a ridiculous amount of damage here. And, well, is there Omni Slash? No, he's going to just go for this. But the problem is the Omni Slash is coming out. Everybody knows he's coming out. Never mind. He's like going for the spin just TPs, but <laughs> the question oh, that, mark. 
Oh, oh that's that bad that, man. That's so cocky. That, oh. that is that is quite a degree of bad manner. Uh, I, I I suppose there's nothing they can really do oh, to the mid oh, hook shot, get a mid hook shot, and they're gonna try to bring down and successfully do so on the pugna. Yeah, Pugna blown to pieces within seconds. This was terrific. Uh, was this even Fate Ball? Yeah, Fate Ball, Split Earth, like his HP just vanished into nothing. That's that's also the downside of, of this Pugna at the moment. He has what? He has Braces and a Magic one. That's all he boosts in his stats. So uh, if you find him solo, then he's just dying. Like Gyrocopter versus still Invisible Juggernaut, which of course is still the, the only slash. And... Well, okay, he's actually TPing out and wait, they removed the, the mini stun right from Omni Slash, so it would not even have interrupted it. Mm. Uh. Yes. <laughs> I I must be forgetting a patch note. I, I can't actually remember a patch note about removing the mini stun, but okay. We'll go with it. We go with it. Um, the mech here is actually the presser back, but we talk about a 21 minutes mech. And no, actually, he is not even that close to one of the gold still missing. And they find the gyro here. He has no BKB, no nothing he can actually activate, but he gets forced up and disrupted. So this is actually quite good because the clockwork is now in an awkward position. There is the heal coming out by the Pakna, but it also means the Pakna has to go out. In the end, well, there is still the juggernaut, and he would really like to get off his Omni Slash. There it is. It's only on one target. It's not bouncing to anyone else. So, but. Who needs the bounces? He's just going deck propify on the presser back, four stuff forward, and is that enough? Is the Queen of Pain? Well, could go for some more. Gets the Chakram mana, well, Chakram magic that is, and the Radiant Courier actually dying under the tower with a 50 gold value in it. What was that, a clarity or something? They would only be a clarity or a, or a stick, but from. Yeah, I, I admit, I was wrong about the mini sun. Hands up. Uh, in, in this case, the Juggernaut is just being such a powerhouse in this game. Hell, they're just going to go straight on to Fan, and he's stunned out. He got even split Earth after that. BKB pop goes in cube. He's just going to tear him apart. One more right click and a crit. Manages to finish him off, and a TP out as well. They can't stop the Juggernaut. And this is one of the things I was going to mention before when we saw that question mark and a little bit of BM. What do they have that can stun through a BKB or a Omni Slash? Yep. No, that's... I don't know. You there is can't nothing. Really do anything, especially now that the BKB comes up. He has two sources of immunity. Uh, you barely have anything piercing. You do not have any source of mini stun whatsoever. Even if the MKB would come out on the gyrocopter, it's a magic stun. Therefore, you cannot interrupt it. Uh, he would really need a abyssal plate or like a, just just a ranged back basher or the prison back going for a bash or something like that. But hell, the prison back just finished at 22 minutes. Uh, mech, so I doubt he's gonna get a bash here anytime soon. It's just looking bad for EP. As I said, if they're gonna push till the time we have right now, and they're gonna be successful, it's good, but oh, well, look at this. He tried to farm, but he's gonna get instantly punished, and well, this is pretty much the end. Keep of the light, getting the illuminate blasted, that's pretty much it. Lashvark, well, just putting a lightning in there, reminding that he's also still in the game, but that's it. That's pretty much the end of the story. 17 and 4, we talk about soon to go as 15k lead and the lash rack even found here. Queen of Pain did now finally pop the BKB and just go on in the gyrocopter trying to like force stuff forward. There's the Omni Slash. Well, BKB out at uh, the Manta out, but it didn't help. The jumps are there and even the Pakna is going down. The only survivor is Mr. Shadow Demon. He doesn't care and the GG is out. Like this push draft, it just did not work. No, it didn't. NG Pacemaker, they just couldn't deliver with this combination. And I think more importantly, they didn't have any way of controlling this Juggernaut through a Blade, Blade Fury or a BKB, which is one of the bigger issues. And the BKB perfectly dealt with the, the deficits of the Mask of Madness, which was my worry when I saw the Mask of Madness pick up. But still, it seems we're getting a game three. Yep, absolutely. So, that being said, the comeback is real. Tong Fu versus EP, we are on a one one situation that means we have a game free incoming so i mean i don't mind actually like having every game today being a real best of three with free games it's fine but as i said ep they work well under pressure maybe they just i don't know they just didn't have the the punch to finish it in, in a 2-0 or tung fu is just too good and they just gave accidentally the first game away we were gonna find out in the next one uh, because the, the the third one is the lucky charm for either team we are back guys, 10 minutes, some music, some ads, and yeah, the decider.
who actually gets into the grand finals because this is already the winner bracket final so there is not anything coming in the winner bracket we have done two more games in the loser bracket one is actually playing at the moment on Hefla TV 2 guys so check that one out yeah that's pretty much it we are back